the Messiah's name would be, Yeshua, making it the most astonishing discovery, for both Jews and Christians. Why is his name not foretold by the prophets? Well my friend, you are about to hear, from the mouth of God himself. The very name of King Messiah, foretold by the prophet Zechariah. Every rabbi, and Jewish scholar, know that when the Bible refers to the branch, that it is referring, to the messianic king. A king from the lineage of Jesse, David's father. A king who will one day rule Israel, and usher in an era, of peace. The Bible verses about the branch, are truly worth studying. Isaiah, 11, verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod. Out of the stem of Jesse. And a branch, shall grow out of his roots. And again, in Jeremiah 23 5 it says. Behold. The days come, saith the Lord. That I will raise unto David, a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Note the references to the branch, and the king. Now keep this in mind as we read, the Messianic Zechariah prophecy, from the Hebrew Names Bible. During the time, of the prophet Zechariah, there was, a high priest, called Yehoshua. And, it was during his days, that the name of the Messiah, was foretold not only before him, but before, all, the priests. And God makes specific mention that this would be a sign, to take note of. Zechariah, 3 8. Here, now, Yehoshua, the Kohingadol, which means high priest. You, and your fellows who sit before you, for they are men who are a sign. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. Let us stop right there. Who is God saying that he will bring forth? It's his righteous servant, the branch, which we know is none other than King Messiah. Now as a sign that God is speaking about his coming King Messiah, God tells the priests the following, Zechariah 6:11. Yes, take silver and gold and make crowns and set them on the head of Yehoshua, the son of Yehutzadak, the Kohingadol, and speak to him saying, Thus says the Lord of armies, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up, out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Let us examine, what we've just read. God says behold the man whose, name, is the branch. Who is the man God is talking about? It's Yehoshua, the high priest. So, is God calling Yehoshua, the branch? No, not at all. God has just declared that, Yehoshua, bears the same name, as the branch. The future King Messiah, which God is going to bring forth. In other words God has chosen the name, Yehoshua, as the name for his Messiah. Isn't that, just, amazing? This prophecy has remained unseen by the Jewish people, for thousands of years. But today God is revealing it to us, so that we can know for sure, the name, of his Messiah. And, as a sign, of this name, the priests are told to make crowns, of silver, and gold. And to set them upon the head, of Yehoshua, the high priest. To signify the coming, of Yehoshua the Messiah, the king, of kings. In Hebrew the name, Yehoshua, is the same as Yeshua, which in English is Jesus, and it means Yahweh saves. Yes my friend, there, in the Hebrew Bible, for all to see, is the very name, of Yeshua Jesus, the righteous servant, the branch, the one who brings salvation. In the English Bible, this name is translated as Joshua, but Joshua, in Hebrew, is Yehoshua, or Yeshua. The Douay Reims Bible, in its translation, actually uses the name Jesus. In this verse, which shows us conclusively, that Yehoshua really does translate, into the English name, Jesus. Now let's see what else, the prophet Zechariah said, about this branch, 
Let's continue from the end of Zechariah 3 8. 4. Behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. For behold the stone, that I have set before. Yehoshua. On one stone, are seven, eyes. Behold, I will engrave the engraving of it, says the Lord of armies. And I will remove the iniquity, of that land in one day. Let's examine this verse. Here we see God making a connection, between, his King Messiah and a stone. A stone engraved with the words, I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. Psalms 118:21 says, I will give thanks to you. For you have, answered me. And have become, my, Yeshua. The stone, which the builders rejected, has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, it is marvelous, in our eyes. Isn't that, amazing? In the Hebrew Names Bible, we can see the very name of Yeshua Jesus. Meaning salvation. Linked to the stone. The stone which was rejected by the Jewish builders, and yet this stone, has still become the head of God's temple. My friend this stone, of salvation, was King Messiah. The same stone. By which God declared he would remove the iniquity, of that land in one, day. Isaiah 28 16 says. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation. A stone. A tried stone. A precious corner stone. A sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. My friend this stone laid by God in Zion, is King Messiah. The stone which removes iniquity. The stone, in which you must, believe. Jewish people, are often told. That the Isaiah 53 verses, refer to Israel. As the suffering servant. But if we take a closer look, we see the same references, to the branch, and the root of Jesse. The following is just a few verses from Isaiah 53. If you have never read this chapter, please do so, when you finish this video. Isaiah 53 2. For he shall grow up before him. As a tender plant. And as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty, that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant, justify many. And he shall bear, their iniquities. Note the reference, to the tender plant, and the root, which is again a reference to the branch and the root of Jesse. And it also states this righteous servant, will justify, people, before God, by bearing their iniquities. So clearly this whole chapter about the suffering servant, is not speaking about Israel. For Israel, never bore, anyone's iniquities. It is only the righteous servant, King Messiah, who suffered terrible persecution. To justify people before God. By bearing their iniquities. And it also states, that he would be despised and rejected, by the Jewish people. My friend this lines up perfectly. With the prophecy King David wrote, about the stone of salvation. Yeshua. Which the builders rejected. Can you see, that Yeshua Jesus. Is that stone. That stone rejected, which became the head of the corner. Yes, Yeshua. Became the head of God's temple. His temple, of people. Let's go back for a minute and examine the first verse. Of Isaiah, 53. Isaiah says. Who, has believed our message? And to whom, has the arm, of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Let's examine this. Who is the subject of this verse? It is the arm, of the Lord. Isaiah declares that this person, is actually the very arm, of God himself. But he asks, who will believe this message? That God's arm, has been revealed to men. You see Isaiah wouldn't ask, 
to whom this arm had ever been revealed. If the arm was Israel, for everyone had seen Israel. No, the arm of the Lord is a part of God Himself that had been hidden from the eyes of men and hardly seen before, but suddenly was revealed, growing up before God as a tender plant, a person that had no beauty that would make people desire him. King David also prophesied about the arm of the Lord, saying, Sing to the Lord, a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand, and his holy arm, have worked salvation, for him. The Lord, has made known, his, Yeshua. So clearly this arm of the Lord, who works salvation for God, is Yeshua. He is a part of God Himself, His right arm, who came down from heaven, to be born as a man, and to grow up as this, tender plant. Isaiah, goes on to say, Yet we did esteem Him, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But He was wounded for our transgressions, He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement, of our peace was upon Him. And with His stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord, hath laid on him, the iniquity, of us all. Yes God, declares plainly, that it was our, transgressions, he was wounded for. Our iniquities, he was bruised for. God laid on him the iniquity, the sins, of us all. My friend, it was no coincidence, that God called his Messiah, the branch. For the branch, is exactly what King Messiah, carried, to the hill, of Calvary. King Messiah is that branch, the branch who brings salvation. And in Isaiah 53, God calls him a tender plant, growing, in a dry place. My friend Yeshua, is that plant, the plant, rising up from the ground, and he became, like a branch by being nailed to, and hanged from that plant, which is the cross of salvation. God couldn't have found a better description, to describe his Messiah. He is indeed the branch, who brings salvation. The righteous servant who bears, our iniquity. He was, the tender plant springing forth from the ground. And he is Zion's, precious stone, of salvation the stone which was placed before Yehoshua the high priest. By which, God declared, that he would remove, our iniquity. And Yeshua, is, that stone, in whom we find forgiveness, from sin. In the New Testament, a Jewish apostle called Peter, said in Acts 4 11, He is the stone which was regarded as worthless by you, the builders, which has become the head of the corner. There is salvation in none other, for neither is there any other name, under heaven, that is given among men, by which we must, be saved. Yes my friend Yeshua, is the name which saves, for it's the only name which declares, Yahweh saves, for he alone, is the rock of our salvation, the stone, which removes iniquity. When Yeshua, came riding into Jerusalem, on a donkey, through the king's gate. All Jerusalem hailed him. As foretold in Psalms 118. The one who comes in the name of the Lord. For Matthew 21 8 says. And a very great crowd spread their garments in the way. Others, cut down branches from the trees, and spread them, in the way. And, the crowds, who went before. And those who followed, cried out saying. Hosanna to the son, of David. Blessed is he, who comes, in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. This was to fulfill, what the prophet Zechariah, wrote about King Messiah. Saying, Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king, comes to you. He is righteous, and having salvation. Lowly, and riding, on a donkey. Even on a colt the foal of a donkey. Yes Jerusalem. Your king, did come to you, your king came having salvation. But he was not the conqueror, you expected. 
Instead he came lowly, and humble, and riding, upon the colt of a donkey, just as the prophet Zechariah said he would. And they cried out, Blessed is he who comes, in the name of the Lord. This phrase is taken from Psalm 118, which is the same psalm, which talks about God's Yeshua, his salvation, as the very stone, which the builders rejected. But then goes on to say, Blessed is he, who comes, in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you, out of the house, of the Lord. So, there can be no doubt, that the one who comes, in the name of the Lord, is King Messiah. The same one whom the prophet Zechariah, said came having, salvation. But, King David says, that this one, who comes in the name of the Lord, King Messiah, is also the salvation stone. Yeshua, whom Israel, would reject. The same one, whom they had blessed. And they rejected their stone, King Messiah, because he did not seem to fit their idea, of what they wanted the Messiah, to be. So, they cast him aside, like a rejected stone. But God made this rejected salvation stone, the head of his temple. And, King, David, declares this to be the most marvelous thing, to behold. That one, whom Israel, had rejected, still, became the head of God's temple. Because he became the head, the head of the church. There is simply no other way, to explain this prophecy, other than the fact that the Jewish people, blessed, Yeshua Jesus, as the King, who comes, in the name of the Lord. But then went on, to cast him aside like a rejected stone, fulfilling this prophecy. The prophet Isaiah called him a stone, of stumbling and a rock of offense, to both the houses of Israel. And this is so true, for the majority of the Jews have stumbled over him, and have become, offended, by him. For they did not recognize, that the rejected stone, was King Messiah. In Matthew 23 39, Yeshua says, For I tell you, you will not see me from now on, until you say, Blessed is he, who comes, in the name of the Lord. My friend, there is coming a day, when Israel, will, once again, bless Yeshua, as having come, in the name of the Lord. For Yeshua said, he would not return, and we, would not see him again, until, Israel had blessed him, as having come in the name of the Lord. The day that Israel repents and finally recognizes Yeshua, their Messiah, is described by the prophet Zechariah. Zechariah 12:10 says, "And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon me, whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him, as one mourneth." for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him, as one that is in bitterness, for his first, born. Yes my friend, only in those days, will God, show grace, and open their eyes, so that they can recognize the Lord, the Lord whom they pierced with nails, and crucified. And when they realize, how they had despised and rejected, their Messiah, they shall mourn for him, as one mourns, for an only son. Because he is the son, the son of God. Zechariah, goes on to say. In Zechariah 13 6. And one shall say, unto him. What are these wounds, in thine hands? Then he shall answer. Those with which I was wounded. In the house of my friends. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd. And against the man that is my fellow. Seth the Lord of hosts. Smite. The shepherd. Zechariah tells us, that the one, for whom Israel mourns, is the one who was pierced, the one with wounds in his hands. Wounds created by his friends, the Jewish people. And God tells us that the sword, the sword of death, was against his shepherd, the man who is God's friend, his fellow. And they did smite, the shepherd. Meaning they killed him. There is only one shepherd, of God. 
with wounds in his hands, who was killed, killed by his own people, and his name is Yeshua. Many Christians wonder why the majority of Jews rejected the Messiah, and Romans 11:25 answers that question, saying, "For I do not desire you to be ignorant, brothers, of this mystery, lest you be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, and so all Israel shall be saved." As it is written, the Deliverer shall come out of Zion, and he shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Paul says that the reason Israel did not recognize her Messiah is because God is waiting for all the Gentiles to be saved first. And once that has happened, then Israel's eyes will be opened to also recognize Yeshua as Messiah, and then all of Israel will be saved. The verse about the Deliverer, coming to Zion, is taken from Isaiah 59:20, And, the Redeemer, shall come to Zion, and unto them, that turn, from transgression, in Jacob, saith the Lord. You see the turning from transgression, and national repentance, starts before the Redeemer returns, to deliver Israel, from her enemies. The prophet Daniel, describes the destruction of the Arab, nations by King Messiah. The nations which try to destroy Israel, in the last days. In Daniel 2:34, he says. You saw until a stone, was cut out without hands, which struck the image, on its feet, that were of iron and clay, and broke them in pieces. Yes once again the stone, which Daniel speaks of, which he sees cut out of the heavenly mountain, is Yeshua. King Messiah, the stone, who will descend from heaven, at his glorious second coming, to strike the Arab, nations, who seek to destroy Israel. He is the Lord, the Deliverer and Redeemer, who will appear from heaven, with his heavenly army, to fight for Israel, at the battle of, Armageddon. And Daniel 2.35, goes on to say, and the stone that smote the image, became a great mountain, and filled the whole earth. Which describes, that the kingdom of Messiah, will fill the whole earth. The prophet Zechariah, has revealed to us, the most wonderful revelation, that Yeshua, is without doubt, the name of King Messiah. He is the branch, the blessed Redeemer, and Zion's precious, rejected stone. And the prophet Micah, tells us, that King Messiah, is not an ordinary man. For Micah says, But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little, among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee, shall he come forth, unto me. That is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth, have been from of old, from everlasting. The prophet Micah tells us that King Messiah, will be born from Bethlehem. And he will be ruler in Israel. And then he tells us the most marvelous thing. That this king, has existed from of old. From everlasting. My friend Micah declares, that King Messiah, is, eternal. He is one who comes out of Bethlehem. Yet he has existed from of old, from the days of eternity. This is because, Yeshua, King Messiah, is eternal. He is the right hand of God, who took on flesh to become the savior of the world. And this is why, the prophet Isaiah, said. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor. The Mighty God. The Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace. There shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom to order it, and to establish it with judgment, and with justice, from henceforth, even forever. Isaiah declares plainly, that this child, this son, will be called the mighty God, because he is God, in the flesh, and he will, reign, upon the throne of David, and will rule his kingdom, even forever.
That is a very long time. My friend he is the same son. King David prophesied, would rule the earth. For Psalm 2 7 says. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, you are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask of me, and I will give the nations, for your inheritance. The uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore be wise, you kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun. Lest he be angry, and you perish in the way. For his wrath, will soon be kindled. Blessed are all those who take refuge, in him. He is indeed God's son. He is King Messiah. Who will inherit the uttermost parts of the earth. And dash them in pieces, at his second coming. When he saves, Israel, from the onslaught of these nations. This is why King David said. We should honor the son. Lest he be angry. For the day of the Lord is coming. The day of the Lord's wrath. It will soon be kindled. But blessed, are, all, those. Who have taken refuge. In this son. For he is the son of God. And the deliverer. And, all those who have, taken refuge in him, have nothing, to fear. When he comes to judge, and break the nations, with his rod. My friend today is the day to repent. And get right with God. There is only one true God, the God who saves. And he, is Yahweh. The God of Israel. And this is how we recognize the true God, for saving people is his personal signature. He is the God who saved the Jews from bondage, in Egypt. And, he is the same God who saves the whole world, from their bondage, of sin. That is how we recognize that he is God. For he is the only Savior. That is why, he chose the name Yeshua. Because, that is his personal signature. Yahweh, saves. For God declared in Isaiah 43:11, I, even I, am Yahweh. And besides me, there is no Savior. Yeshua Jesus declared, Salvation, is from the Jews. For it is the Jewish Messiah, who has brought the salvation of God, to every nation, on earth. And it was Yeshua's twelve Jewish apostles, who spread the good news, that all people, can be saved from the bondage of sin, and be reconciled to God, through Yeshua the Messiah. You see the Jewish nation, was the first to be saved from physical bondage in Egypt. But God had it in mind, to save the entire world, from its spiritual bondage, to sin and to restore the world, from its fallen state. Bringing all people, back into his presence. And he did this through his Jewish Messiah. When Abraham was told by God, to go and sacrifice his son Isaac, on Mount Moriah. Genesis 22 6 says. And Abraham took the wood, of the burnt offering, and laid it upon Isaac, his son. And he took the fire, in his hand, and a knife. And they went, both of them together. Abraham, knew that the very wood, he had laid upon the back, of his precious son, and made him carry to Mount Moriah, was the very wood, on which his son, was intended to be, sacrificed. This my friend is the most amazing shadow, of the very wooden cross, that Yeshua carried on his back, to the hill of Calvary, on which he, too, would be sacrificed. And Genesis 22 9 says, And Abraham built an altar, there. And laid the wood. In order. And bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar. Upon the wood. And in like fashion. God, placed Yeshua. Upon, the wood. Binding him, to the wooden cross. And it was then that God saw, that Abraham was willing to give up the most precious thing, he had. His son. But, God didn't want Abraham, to sacrifice his son. And so, he provided a substitute, to take Isaac's place. A, ram. Whose horns, were caught on a tree. My friend that ram, which took Isaac's place, was a symbol, of God's son, Yeshua. 
who took our place upon the altar of wooden sticks. The ram whose horns were caught on the tree, which was the cross of Calvary. And Abraham said in Genesis 22:14, In Yahweh's mountain, it will be provided. For he declared, that God, provided his own sacrifice. A sacrifice given. By God, and from his holy mountain. And indeed God did provide, his own sacrifice. His, own son. Given from the holy mountain, of heaven itself. To take our place, as the Lamb of God placed upon the altar of wooden sticks. It was because, Abraham, was willing to give God, the most precious thing he had. God said, I am also, willing, to give you, the most precious thing I have, my, own, son. My friend, Abraham's story, was a shadow of what God, has done for us. That to be saved, from eternal death, all that we have to do, is to behold the Lamb, Yeshua, whom God himself provided, from heaven's mountain, to take our place. This is why God declared to Abraham in Genesis 22:16, I have sworn by myself, says Yahweh, because you, have done this thing, and have not withheld your son, your only son. In your seed, will all the nations, of the earth be blessed, because, you have obeyed, my voice. How, have all the nations of the earth been blessed? By what Abraham did. There is only one way. Because all nations, have accepted the seed, Yeshua. The seed of Abraham, the Jewish son. Which was placed upon the altar of sticks. And offered up to God, exactly, like Abraham's son was. Because God saw, that Abraham was willing to give him, his only son. God too, was willing to give the world, his only son, because of what Abraham, had done. And this is why, John 3:16 says, For God, so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but so that the world might be saved, through him. He, who believes on him, is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name, of the only begotten Son, of God. In Romans 10:13, it says, For whosoever, shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall, be saved. Romans 10 verse 9 to 10, that, if you will confess, with your mouth, that Yeshua, is Lord, and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. My friend if you have never confessed Yeshua, as your Lord, or called upon him, for salvation, I hope, that you will pray this prayer with me, today. My Father, I confess Yeshua Jesus as my Lord, and my Savior. Thank you, for sending him to die, on the cross, for my sins. I believe that you raised him from the dead, and that he is coming back as King, to judge the world. My Father, I, repent. Please, forgive me, of all my sins. Come, into my heart, and give me, ever, lasting life. In the name, of your Son, Yeshua Jesus. Amen. If you have said this prayer, and decided to turn, from your life of sin, and follow Yeshua Jesus, the Messiah, then you have become a child, of God.